Hi folks, Ross here from the Open Airway and the UCT Anesthesia Airway Skills Lab and I want to talk about a bit of an overview of intubating through supraglottic airways. So, you might want to do this where, let's say you have a patient under routine anesthesia with a supraglottic in place where the procedure uh, has escalated or the duration is extended and you now need to place an endotracheal tube or you Perhaps the patient has to go to ICU and you want an endotracheal tube. You don't want to lose the airway by pulling out your LMA and then having to re-intubate. Or it could be in a failed airway situation where you've rescued the situation with supraglottic and now let's say you want to send the patient a CT scan and you want an ET tube in place. Or perhaps the patient's been brought in from a resuscitation with a supraglottic in place and you now want a, an endotracheal tube again for the patient to go to theater or ICU. Now, your strategy is going to be determined to a large extent by what supraglottic airway is in place. And that is because the structure of different supraglottic airways does or does not allow an adequate sized endotracheal tube to pass through them. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example of uh, one of the older and, and uh, very well-known supraglottics, the classic LMA. So the classic LMA was never designed specifically with intubation in mind. And although it works very effectively for, for patient ventilation, to get an endotracheal tube through here can be a bit of a problem. So, this is a size 4 classic LMA. So this is for a patient of a body weight of 50 to 70 kilos. So you'll agree with me that for that kind of patient, so let's say 60 kilo patient, small adult, I'm probably going to want a size 7, 7.5 seven endotracheal tube. Well, here's a size 6 ET tube from our theaters, and you can see that I can't actually get this size 6 to go through this LMA and in fact I might also then struggle with the, the epiglottic bars at the end. So I'm going to need a smaller tube to go through here and then I start having difficulty with if I've got a small tube is it going to be long enough to ventilate the patient effectively or to pass through the cause and wide enough to actually ventilate uh, effectively. So that becomes a bit of, of a problem. Now. A lot of newer devices have addressed this issue and said, okay, well, we'll make a device that's got a wide internal bore which will allow you to pass an endotracheal tube. So here's a, um, an Ambu Aura Eye, and this is a size 2.5. So this is for a patient of uh, 20 to 30 kilograms, so a lot smaller than that device's patient. But you can see here I'm able to pass the endotracheal tube through without too much difficulty because it's been designed with a wide bore. However, you'll notice how straight the tube comes out the end this is not designed to allow blind intubation with any good success rate. This, you need a fiberscope for guidance. Another example, here's a size 3 LMA, uh, not LMA, I apologize, eye gel. This is for a 30 to 60 kilo patient. And you can see a size 6 tube passes through here with, the, with very little difficulty whatsoever. So the selection of the device, if you are planning to intubate down the line, is quite sensible. But if the device is already in, then you've got no choice and you have to make do. Here's another example of a device often used for, as a rescue airway, uh, LMA Supreme. And if you have a look on the inside, you'll see that it's got these prominent epiglottic bars, which make it very difficult to get a tube of almost any size through there. So now we have a bit of a, a, bit of a conundrum. And then we've also got LMAs which are designed specifically to allow intubation uh, blindly. So and the classic example is here, the... Uh, Fast track intubating LMA, you'll see it's got this rigid shape to it. It's got a specifically designed endotracheal tube. And when the tube comes out the end, it comes out at a nice acute angle, so that's designed to go through the vocal cords. Or, in fact, we could even use a video intubating LMA, such as this uh, total track that I've got here. I'm going to do subsequent videos on those two devices, so watch this space. What do we do about the situation where we've got an LMA in or a supraglottic in that allows us to intubate with an adequate sized tube but is not designed for blind intubation. Well, then we load our tube on a fiberscope, put the fiberscope down the LMA, and we intubate. We'll cover that in another video. What about the situation where you can't get an adequate sized tube into your supraglottic? Well, for that, you can use an exchange catheter. So we've got our entry intubating catheter designed to go over a pediatric scope and to fit through one of these devices so that we can perform an intubation. And I'll show you how that's used also in a subsequent video. So, depending on the type of device that's been used, you've got to ask yourself, can I use this as a video intubating LMA? Can I use it as a blind intubating LMA? Do I need a fiberscope or do I need to use a fiberscope with the intermediate step of an exchange catheter? We'll cover all of those shortly. 